So it's all very well and good learning this stuff in theory, but how about the practical implementation? In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking down another real deal. This is one of my portfolio that you can look at and learn from the experience. So I'm gonna do this video with a bit of screen share in here as well, just so I can give a bit of an overview of the deal so you can actually see. Now this deal is a Northeast deal in England. It's a lease option. So before we jump into the deal, let me just remind you of what a lease option is. A lease option really is split into two parts, the lease and the option. So the lease part is taking control of the property and agreeing with the landlord, the owner of the property, that you are able to lease out the property on their behalf and benefit from the finance. And the option is the right, but not the obligation to purchase the property on or before the completion day. Now, I know that can be confusing, but essentially you are securing the property at a price agreed today and you get to buy it at any point in the future up until the agreed term. So for example, I agreed to buy your property for £100,000 within the next five years. That is called the consideration, the lease and the option. Now, just so you've got an idea of the process of this, the owner of the property sits on one side, you then put the contract in place to gain control of the property and you make money. So the way to take control, you can rent it out, you can refurbish it, you can service accommodation it, HMO, tenant buyer, get planning on it, do whatever you want as if you own the property. Now, of course, you do need to get signed off by the owner, which is previously agreed. The option part is it allows you to sell the property. So once you've got an option, you don't actually need to buy it. It's called assignability. So because of the contract, you can assign it to another person. Let's say within five years, the 100 grand property is worth 120,000. You might buy it from 100, own it because it's worth more, etc. Or you might go, actually, I don't want to own the property, so I'm going to sell it for 120,000, even though you don't own it. Then what happens is 100,000 goes to the owner of the property and you get 20,000 pounds. But you can also buy it or you can do an option, uh, option it on, i.e. somebody else can take on the power of the lease option moving forward. With that brief understanding in place, let's look at a real deal. So this is Scarborough Road, it's in the Northeast, and this is a property that we ended up taking on directly from an existing landlord. We end up putting on a lease option of seven years on this property, which gives us the right but not the obligation to purchase this property at an agreed price within that seven year time frame. We actually agreed to buy this property for 35,000 500 pounds. Now you might be thinking that is ridiculously cheap and that's because it is. But it comes with some drawbacks in this particular area. If you've been in property long enough, you know that anything with a purchase price below like 60, 65,000, you're really going to struggle to get a mortgage on that. And so if I needed to purchase a 35,500, I'm really going to have a problem with the mortgageability of that. So I'd end up having to purchase cash. I spent seven grand on refurbishing the property. So have a look at these photos. This is what it looked like before. And what will baffle you in property, especially with people that are selling off as a lease option, is the quality of the property really is low. So this actually was tenanted and it's pretty grim, as you can see from the photos. It's dingy, but lived in. And so what we end up doing is getting, the, well, the tenant was out. We spent £7,000 just giving it a freshener and being able to get it into a tenantable standard that we can be proud of. And, you know, I really think that when you're building your portfolio, you want to have pride in what you're doing. The hope is that spending this £7,000 on the refurbishment, it will allow the property value to increase. The next best property on the street in that current condition was sold for £50,000 in March 2021. So it gives you an idea of a decent property and what it's going to end up going for. We end up renting this property for £395. The problem with this area is, well, there's actually a few different angles. First of all, it's selective licensing. What that means is it's in a particular area where the properties just are not run to the best standards. So the council steps in to make sure that people are doing, or landlords in particular, are doing the right thing by their tenants. It's also a bit of a rough area, if I'm completely honest. Now, it's a little bit rough. It means that the tenant type in the area maybe isn't the most desirable. 
And so by renting to a charity, it really allowed us to de-risk the position. So yes, they're only paying £395, but I don't need a management company in place and it's a five-year FRI lease. If you don't know what an FRI lease is, it's a full repairing and insuring lease. It's more common in offices when you rent an office for three years, five years, you do an FRI lease. What it means is that no matter what condition the charity or the house ends up with in, in the next five years, the charity will pay to put it back to the original standard. So it gives me some confidence and protection. And it's also nice knowing that we're doing something decent for the local community and, of course, the charity. The mortgage on this is a whopping £65.93. I know it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? That is an expensive phone bill. I would say on a monthly basis. And it's like, you can own a property for 65 quid a month. Yes, you can. That is what the mortgage costs on this property. So we're making a gross profit of 329. It ends up netting down to about uh, 200 pounds a month. But the gross rental profit over the six and a half years, which is from when we got the tenant in, is 25,000 pounds plus £10,000 equity. The hope is by the time that it gets to the end of that six and a half years, you're going to, we're going to end up with a property worth around £70,000, which means we'll be able to purchase the property. More than likely, I've actually recalibrated my strategy. So being open with you guys, it's really, I'm probably going to offload this property. It's going to, it's great investment. It's a cash cow for the right person. It's just actually, I'm really localizing and re-looking at my property portfolio, going for more expensive properties now, which you've probably seen me going to on the property. So in theory, in today's money, it's £35,662 profit that I'm going to be making from this property. And considering I put in a pound to secure the property on lease option and £7,000 investment, I don't think that's too bad overall. So Really, this is making money in three ways. Number one, added value, okay? Even though I don't own the property, I control it. And so any increase in value, I'm able to capture in the lease option because of the assignability of the contract. Number two is the rental income. Getting the rental income from the tenants, in this case, a charity that guarantees it under an FRI lease, the full repairing and insuring lease. And of course, rental growth. As supply and demand changes over time, what happens is the supply is really restricted in those areas because a lot of people are not buying to rent out anymore because the buildings just don't allow for the value. So because of this increase in demand, what that causes is an increase in rents over time. And what we need to remember is that increase in rents is actually pure profit. So of course, there are other costs to take account of when you're looking into this. Now, voids, maintenance and management are the ones that get left out repeatedly. But because of getting the charity in place, it's not something I need to worry about because it's guaranteed rent, guaranteed maintenance and there's zero management costs. And so the profitability of this particular lease option just is really quite magical in the fact that we're putting minimum money in around seven thousand well, seven thousand and one pounds um, and getting 35 grand back minimum over the next six and a half years or what I think of with the increased equity is actually going to be 55,000 pounds which by anyone's account is a phenomenal return on investment. So you might say well Jamie why are you going to end up getting rid of this property at the end because it doesn't align with my investment strategy and I think having a core strategy moving forward is really important. That's it for today I really wanted to give an overview of a lease option and a real deal of how you can implement this but this is a new set of the YouTube channel where I'm really trying to introduce deals that I've done, I guess number one for credibility, but number two to show you guys that this is actionable and you need to be going out there and getting your own real deals. Let me know what you thought of the video in the comments. If there's any other angle you want me to come from in these videos, ultimately I'm making the video for you. And of course, I'd really love to hear, have you done a lease option? What's your experience of it? Let me know in the comments. If you got value in particular, make sure to destroy the like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure to lightly tap the subscribe button and the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.